So if you're using 3D printing for car audio for things like custom speaker adapters, amplifier racks, or even speaker pods or subwoofer boxes, odds are you're going to need a way to use fasteners to hold the different parts of the project together. So we need a way to add threads to our 3D printed parts, and one of the best ways to do this is to use heat set inserts. But how do we properly seat these into our parts, and what other considerations do we need to make during the design process? What specialized tools will make it easy to add these inserts to our parts? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, let's dive on in. So really quick, before we get into the content, I do want to thank our monthly channel sponsor, New Concepts. New Concepts has a wide variety of different car audio wiring and power distribution accessories. One of my favorite distribution blocks to use is this guy here. This is the New Concepts Basic Fuse Block. There's a few different models of these, but this one in particular is one of my favorites. It has two connections in and three connections out. So you could have your power wires coming in and then you could have two different amplifiers connected or add a third accessory, something like a DSP. Better yet, what's super cool about these is they can be used as both the positive and ground distribution blocks. For the positive side, you would use your different fuses. And for the ground side, you would use these here. These are grounding links. I love the simplicity of these and how versatile they are. And I've used them on many projects on the channel. You guys can learn more at the links down in the video description. So first off, on these heat set inserts, which size do you want to get? Well, of course, the inside size of these is going to depend on the threaded fastener size that you're planning on using. And I tend to use two different sizes most commonly. I'll be using a number eight by 32 thread and a 10 by 24 thread here in the States. Understand though that these heat set inserts come in multiple different heights, even if they do have the same thread size. The advantage of having a taller height is obviously you have more material holding the insert in place, but the disadvantage of that is you have to have more thickness to your part where you're planning on using these. I found that for most of my applications, I end up just using this really shallow height. This is only about a quarter of an inch tall on both of these sizes here but that's definitely something you need to consider when you are designing your part and purchasing these. Now these do come in different materials as well. There's brass, aluminum, stainless steel. Typically I find myself using the brass ones because they're the most inexpensive. If you do want the corrosion resistance that comes along with using stainless steel, you can, but the price definitely adds up really quick. These brass ones tend to be about 25 cents each, but the stainless steel ones can be up to a dollar or more each. So now we need to understand how do we properly design the holes that the heat set insert is going to go into. And for an example, in this project, I wanted to show you guys something relevant. So I figured we would make a custom speaker adapter. You may be wondering though, why not just buy a speaker adapter? Well, that's because with 3D printing, we can do unique things like add an angle. That way we could angle the speakers to be more on axis if we wanted to. And obviously with 3D printing, if we're designing these from scratch, we could change the mounting holes. We could make the speaker cutout hole an exact size to match exactly what speaker we are planning on using. Tons of different advantages there, so let's get on into the design. We're here on the computer and I have got my speaker adapter completely designed. Now, I'm not gonna go full into detail on how I did this design. If that is something that you guys are interested in, definitely let me know and maybe we'll cover that in a future video. What I wanna focus on here is actually adding the holes for the threaded inserts because it's not as simple as just adding a hole. There's a couple of very important things that we wanna pay attention to. First off, when we're looking at the technical data for these heat set inserts, we wanna look for a value here on the drawing for the maximum hole diameter. For whatever reason on this print, it's a little bit difficult to read, but you can see the value right there. It says for maximum hole diameter 0.267. And I find that they usually get this value by taking whatever the diameter is of this part of the insert here and subtracting about five thousandths of an inch. So 0.272 minus 0.005, that gives us that 0.267 value. So when I was designing my part, I used that 0.267 for the whole diameter going down in. But here's the important thing here. You also want to incorporate sort of a chamfer up at the top of the hole. With a 3D design program here, we can control a ton of different parameters for this hole. So what I've done is I have an eight degree chamfer going down in. So it's a very steep, aggressive angle. 
and I've made it so that the top diameter here is going to be 0.28 inches. What that does is it allows us to kind of start the heat set insert down into the hole before it actually starts melting. So that allows us to make sure that it's held good in position as we start heating it up and pushing it down in. We can also, of course, control the overall depth of the hole. In this case, I'm just under a quarter of an inch, and that's because I know that I have some very short fasteners that I can use. But that's another very important thing to consider because you do want to make sure that you have enough clearance behind where the heat set insert is for your fastener to go down through. So we could even do this something as large as a half an inch just to make sure we have that clearance all the way deep down into the part. Now what I love about 3D design is we could also of course drop in the models for our heat set inserts just to get a feel for the size of them and how this is going to all work out. But now that I've got this fully designed, I'm going to export the body as an STL and bring it into my slicer program for the 3D printer. Now, if you're not familiar with 3D printing, a slicer program basically takes your solid part and it's going to determine how to create this slice by slice for your additive manufacturing type 3D printing. Every slicer program allows you to control a multitude of different settings, but the one setting that's really important for heat set inserts that we wanna look for if we come into our layers section here, we're usually going to want to bump up this value here, our outline perimeter shells. Right now it's set at two, and I wanna show you what it looks like at two. If we go into this view here, we can actually see each layer being printed as I kind of scroll here. And as we go up, we're gonna see that hole start to be added. And that two value corresponds with these two circles here, this light blue and then this slightly darker green there's two layers of material. Now let's change that value to four. So I'll edit my process settings, change that to four, okay. And let's see this view again. Now, if we take a closer look at these layers as the machine is printing, you can see we now have four different thicknesses going around here, around the hole. The reason that that is super important is you want that added plastic around your fastener to hold it in position. So now that we know that, we can export the G-code and get our print started. So at the 3D printer, nothing too crazy to do here that's any different from printing any other part. We're just gonna give that part a couple of hours to print, and then we'll check out our finished result. So here it is, guys, our speaker adapter, ready to have those heat set inserts added to those holes that we modeled up and designed. Obviously, always a good idea to do a quick little test fit with our actual speaker itself, but we did tons of measurements on this, so we should be good to go. We do wanna make Make sure that those holes properly line up which it's a little hard to do one-handed here but they do in fact line up so let's get those heat set inserts set into the part now obviously to install these heat set inserts we need to apply some heat and the way we're going to do this is we're going to be using a soldering iron now the way i would do this in the past is i would just leave my normal soldering iron tip on here and this is off right now but i would basically just hold it against the part and allow it to kind of heat up. And once it was hot and most of the way into the part, I would take this metal spatula and I would just kind of push it flush the rest of the way in. In fact, you can see a bunch of circular marks on there from the times that I've done this. The problem with doing it this way is oftentimes as you're starting to heat that in, it will go in crooked or you'll have where this super hot insert will fall out because you didn't line it up perfectly and then you're stuck trying to pick up a flaming hot insert before it burns your table. Instead of using a normal soldering tip, what we can do is we can use one of these specialized tips. These are made for setting these heat set inserts. Now I'll of course have a link for this kit for you guys down in the video description. And you can see my kit here matches the fasteners that I most commonly use, but there's also metric size kits out there. This kit here has a number four size, number six, number eight, number 10, and a quarter inch size. The difference between all these different sizes is the tip right there. You can see that the tip progressively gets larger depending on the thread size that is used. So for our example here, we're gonna be using the number 10 inserts. So let's do a quick test fit here and see that holds nicely in there. It's nice and tight on that hole. Obviously it can turn around, but the advantage here is we're gonna have a ton more control Let's get these added and see how it goes. Installation of these tips should be simple enough. I, of course, want to make sure that my soldering iron is off. Pull off the normal tip, put on our new one, and we'll just thread this collar back on. So 
So after going through this process on these four holes, there's a couple of things I learned. You might think that it's a good idea to take the heat set insert and put it onto the tool and then try to put it down into the hole, but that's actually not a good idea because obviously the tool is going to be hot. The better technique is to take this, and since we planned for it in our design to have that small amount of chamfer up at the top of the hole that will allow this to start to get seated, you can kind of position that in the hole, and then you're going to carefully add the tool and allow that part to heat up as you push it down in. It really only takes a few seconds for this to heat up to the point where it can press down into the part. Now you can definitely make sure that you're pretty square just by carefully making sure that you're perpendicular to the surface that you're pushing into with your tool there, but I still like the idea of using a spatula like this to flip the part over and then just to make sure that it's good and square to the surface of the part as you press it in that final little amount. Now, as a quick side note, there are actually heat set insert extractor tools where the tip of the part here actually has the thread on it that matches the size of your heat set insert. So the way it works is you can kind of screw it in while it's hot and then pull that insert out. But the problem is that version of these tools is definitely a little bit more difficult to find, a little bit more expensive. And the other thing to consider is if you're melting this part to take it out odds are you're not going to have that good extra material that plastic that actually helps these sink down in so I don't really see the value of having an extractor because once you pull that out in my opinion this part isn't as good as it used to be and I kind of wouldn't trust adding in a new insert so now we can use the mounting hardware to mount our speaker to the speaker adapter. And thanks to the threaded heat set inserts, we can take these screws in and out as many times as we want without degrading the quality of that hole. And here it is guys, our speaker mounted onto our custom angled speaker bracket. Now I wanna hear from you, I've got a question for you. Is 3D printing something that you're already using in car audio? And if so, what 3D printer do you have? Also, would you guys like to see more 3D design videos focused on designing different parts? I always appreciate your guys' feedback so that I know if you want more of this type of video. With these heat set inserts, one thing's for sure, you're definitely going to be able to take your 3D printed designs to the next level. Don't forget, next time you need car audio wire and power distribution accessories, definitely check out our show sponsor, New Concepts. Learn more at the link down in the video description. A special thanks to them, along with Jerry, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible. And thank you guys for tuning in and watching.